Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hey, 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 y'all come on in, come on in, come on in, if you can, like, share, tag, um, make sure that if you are, if you have friends, family, whoever inside of this group, if they are not in this group, bring them in, tag them, um, send them a message and say, hey, join Wealth Builders Community, um, just come on in and let's talk about this money. Let's get to this money. Come on in, come on in. If you can, make sure that you share this live video. Share this live video, share this live video. Oh, why is this thing? It got me in question mode here. I'm trying to fix it, y'all. Give me just one second. Okay, it looks like we, okay, there we go. All right, so now you can like, share, you can um, comment. Um, I am using two devices tonight, y'all, so y'all forgive me. Um, but of course, I want to help y'all get to this money. And we are going to talk about some stuff that is going to help all of you Um learn a new technique of making money tonight okay so this is um this is specifically for those that um have maybe recently um gotten a high limit credit card um those of you that have um had the opportunity to get some of that stimulus money um these are some ideas i'm i'm throwing a great idea out there for you um to help you be able to obtain um, some some extra funds, some residuals, some good money coming in. That is what this group is all about. It is helping you make money, okay? And then also, this group is also for you guys to share any questions that you have, um, anything that you would like to ask in accordance to your credit, your financial portfolio, um, we have some really dope people in here that can help you out with that. Um, unfortunately, I had to limit the business. Actually, you know what? Let me talk about this first. Um, I have to limit the business promotion because I was getting some wild. <laughs> I tell you, I was getting some wild business promotion, some things that preferably I'm, I'm a Christian girl, y'all. I, I got virgin ears. Wink, wink. Um, and virgin eyes. Wink, wink. <laughs> so I have a lot of, um, I had a lot of people trying to post some really weird things in this group. Okay. So from now on, if you would like to post, um, your business or you would like to do a promotion or something like that, just inbox me. Um, and I, I could try to help you out with that. Okay. So anyway, I want you guys to be able to make some extra money, to make some good money coming in. Um, so let's get started because I know that there is a lot of information that is wrapped around making money with Airbnb. There's a lot of people who um, claim to know all the secrets of the game and all of those things right there. But I'm going to give you guys the basics and I want you to take it and I want you to run with it because these uh, simple... Uh, this simple information is going to help you be able to tap into, um, to basically start up with no problem, no issues, um, and it will give you the foundations of what you need to be able to grow your business with Airbnb. Now, it also includes some secrets as well, um, and I want you guys to just to get the understanding of how people are flipping their money um, by um building with airbnb all right so let's get right into the presentation as you can see let's make money with airbnb new money old resources okay new money old resources let me go ahead and open this up period period that is correct that is correct miss frederick listen i was so happy to see you being congratulated by your coach um miss tammy price on um Instagram live, I saw you with Coach Stormy and a few other beautiful ladies. I was so amazed. 
And I'm so proud of you. Keep busting that thing down, girl. You getting it, you getting it. I, I'm, I'm so excited to see where you take this and you know where you go with all of this. Um, if you ever need <laughs> any help or advice from me, just let me know. But you know, boo, I'm gonna start doing right. I'm gonna start doing right one day. Um, anyway, so let's get to the money, y'all. Okay, here we go. So first and first, I want to say this. Let me say this because I think. I, 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 this is the part right here that is going to keep many of you from being able to even touch this type of industry. Um, anytime you are dealing with, um, okay, just let me know when you touch down, come through. You, you always come, but you don't let me know. Let me know when you touch down and we'll set something up. Okay, so anytime you are dealing with, um, showing love, kindness, welcoming abilities to complete strangers, you are endeavoring in what is called hospitality. Many of us struggle with our attitudes, with our customer service skills. Um, I actually have many of you that know me. If you don't know me, then um, you'll be getting to know me. Um, but many of you that know me know that I have spent over 15 years of my life in the hospitality industry. My mom always told me that if I found a job where I didn't watch the clock, then most likely that would be my career. Well, I started out in housekeeping and I loved it. It was something that came pretty much natural to me. Um, I never had any issues completing um, any of the tasks. And I always look for even more time at the end of my, my shift. Um, I, I'm a people person, y'all. I love people. Sometimes they don't love me, but I love people. Um, needless to say, um, I have spent a lot of my years giving back, even when I was in the street. That was just something that I did. It is something that God has truly graced me for. And the hospitality industry can be very trying sometimes. Uh, dealing with pe different people from all different walks of life can be something that could be subsequently damaging to your emotions, to your anxiety levels, all of the above. But if you are good problem solving, if you are a good problem solver, excuse me, if you are a good uh, listener, if you can react not just on emotion and react out of the understanding of people. Let me explain that a little bit. Sometimes we have, uh, we have built up the ability to tolerate people. Hey, Chai, how you doing? You know, but in this day and age, what we are lacking is the ability to understand people. And that is what hospitality is surrounded by. It is surrounded by the ability to understand each individual in their situations, okay? All right, so the West, the West, uh, West, ah, y'all, I'm getting tongue tied tonight, Lord help me. Um, the Webster's Dictionary says that hospitality is the friendly reception and treatment of guests or strangers, an act, of an act or show of welcome, the activity or business of providing services to guests in hotels, restaurants, bars, the quality of disposition or receiving or treating guests, strangers in warm, friendly, generous ways. Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> so, Basically, it is just being, it's a fancy way of saying being truly, really, really, really nice to people. And that is so hard in this day and age. And if you, you, if you cannot be nice to people, regardless of your attitude, you are not going to be able to strive in this new environment, in this new normal of what is being um, uh, pirated in the, uh, the United States, okay? So hear me when I say this, humility is the new power. Humility is the way to dominate whatever you are doing. Humility is going to be your new structure. Say it with me, y'all. Humility is going to be my new structure. Okay, listen. I understand that we got strong women, we got strong men, we got powerful um, people that are doing great things, that are doing magnificent things. But um, I believe that if we don't continue to conduct ourselves out of a place of humility, um, we will lose sight of the true goal 
um, that we have set out to complete, okay? All right, so that's first and foremost. If you are going to endeavor in building a Airbnb system, if you're gonna endeavor in building income from Airbnb, residual income from Airbnb, passive income from Airbnb, then you have to have hospitality, okay? That is first and foremost. All right, so let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of um, having a Airbnb, all right? So first and foremost, um, uh, we always want to get the bad out the way. And as you can see that there are actually more bad than good, but we'll get we'll go back to that in just a few minutes, okay? So some of the disadvantages of having a Airbnb is travel travelers can often book an Airbnb Airbnb for less than the cost of a hotel, which is what most time bring most of the time brings them in the the lower prices. Um, the main risk to a traveler is that the property may not live up to its listing. Some of these pictures look good, y'all. Let's let's be real. Don't be one of those people that provide these nice, beautiful, uh, professional photos. But when you see that thing in person, it's toe up from the floor up, okay? Uh, we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that we are giving the guests, um, giving the customer exactly what they set out to receive. Okay, also the main risk to host is that guests might do serious damage to their party. Now we all have had that age where baby, we gonna get a room so we can turn up. Um, I've actually seen recently some of my friends and family um, that actually they rent the Airbnbs to have these huge parties, specifically um, some of the larger mansions and all of the things of that nature. Yeah. Well, honestly, that comes with the territory. And if you are able to put a significant balance on that, you know, basically on vetting, make, make sure that you are vetting your clientele. Make sure that you are vetting the guests. Make sure that you are vetting the customers. Because once you do that, then you can determine who's going to take care of your stuff and who's not. Now, of course, some people might slip through the crack. But you have to make sure that you know who you are inviting into your home. And when I say your home, I truly mean your home. And I'll explain that later as well. All right, so also the global pandemic due to the novel coronavirus has resulted in significant changes to Airbnbs, extenuating circumstances, cancellation and policy. So basically this is saying that it is not a guarantee just because somebody reserves a room, it is not a guarantee uh, that that person is going to fulfill that reservation. Now, there are things that you can have in place to offset that. Now, I can, those are those are areas that we can go into more specific um, once I figure out, you know, who wants to be involved in something like this. If, if you do want to be involved in something like this, I can help you move forward. Um, you can always have different outlets that are helping you, Expedia, third parties, um, hotels tonight, other things that you are able to, other third parties that you're able to list your property on. So that way, if something does not fall through correctly, you always have something that where you can bounce back. You also have to have the right policies in place. Um, the policies that are going to basically help you fulfill each reservation. So you have a cancellation policy. You got to make sure you have the right cancellation policies in place. And it's all a part about having a system. Okay, so we can talk about this um, even more um, later. So you always want to have the right policies in place. And that's something that you're going to make sure that you dig into. And it's simple things. You can copy and paste policies from other websites, but you have to be actually following these policies and including them into your systems. You have to have a system. All right. So that can be avoided. Understanding the global pandemic, we do understand that people is outside, honey. So there are people that will still do business with you um, regardless of what is going on around us in the world, okay? So don't let that stop you from making money. All right, so the advantages. Now, these two are two significant advantages. These two advantages will override everything, all of the negativity that I just talked about. Um, they will override all of that, okay? All right, period. The first one alone is going to put you where you need to be, all right? It's up to each host to decide how much to charge per night, per week, and per month. Let me say that again. 
it's up to each host to decide how much to charge per night, per week, per month, period. You make your own prices. You make your own prices. So because you make your own prices, you can make your own profit margin. You delegate your own, your, you know, your own payouts. You, you, you pretty much control all of that. You are operating as the owner of the listing and also the owner of the property. I'm telling you, if you listen, any business that you can tap into where you can coordinate and curate your own pricing, listen, you already know there's a possibility to make money, but it's all up to you. It's all a gamble. It's all up to you how you set your systems up and how you follow through with it, okay? All right, now, so in recent years, Airbnb has expanded and offered its offerings to include experiences and restaurants. Now, let me explain to you why this is so important, okay? We are in an age of experience. You gotta understand how, how significant this is. We are in the timing of experiences. People are more concerned about the experience than they are the money, the time, the danger, the damage, all of that. So you have to understand the season and the era that, we, that we're in. People are all about the experience. They just want to be able to say, I did it. I went there. I tried that. I, I was there. I did that. People are all about the experiences. So because Airbnb is expanding on that, um, it lets you know that you're tapping into um, a company that is building around the time. Okay. So that is a very significant reason to go ahead and to jump into something like this. Okay. All right. Let's keep moving forward. Let's get into the meat of this thing. All right. So let's talk about the things that you have to know. You got to know. You have to understand these things. If you don't understand these things, then you're not going to be able to, you know, do anything with Airbnb. But these are the significant. Um, these are the basics and the foundations, the things that, these are the secrets to the game. These are the things that you'll need to know in order to be able to tap into Airbnb. Airbnb is what you consider a short-term rental. So you have to understand what a short-term rental is in order to be able to conduct the things that you need to conduct in the back office. Short-term rental refers to the lodging that offers um, that offer rent for 30 calendar days or fewer. One of the primary reasons why associates frown upon short-term rentals is due to the problems tenants bring, which we talked about that earlier. Now, it is a risky business, but short-term rentals are what you'll need to understand and also how to um, create agreements for short-term rentals um, and create a relationship between you and any landlord, um, or any property owner uh, that you may, be, you may be doing business with. You have to secure them in the short-term rental. Now, anytime you're getting ready to go in a contract, you need to know what you're doing, regardless of the fact. So understanding the concept and the capacity of short-term rentals is what's going to allow you to be able to tap into Airbnb because that is what is surrounded by. Um, it's kind of giving you the notion of I see this big, beautiful mansion on TV and I would love to stay there, but I don't have the money to do that. But if I can pay for the experience, if I can pay one night just to stay in there because that's all I need because I really want to experience this, this is what I would like to do. And that's where short-term rentals come into place. So Airbnb saw a need and they created um, what we call, um, I'm sorry, it's on the tip of my tongue, you guys. Basically, they created a solution to a need um, to cut the barrier between those who may want to possibly experience certain things um, and those who just want to, you know, live in certain things. Okay. All right. So understanding short-term rentals is going to be one of the significant secrets behind um, having a Airbnb. All right. So continuing on as far as the downside of that. Now, not all tenants behave the same way. With short-term condo rentals, 
a community association may see a rise in noise, traffic, vandalism, and other issues. So you have to know exactly what's going on. Um, again, know, your, know the person that you're renting to, make sure that you are vetting these people, make sure that you are, you know, get, putting the right people in place, okay? Um, so I did include an example of uh, a short-term rental agreement, vacation rental agreement. This is something that um, that you would basically create between you and the property owner and things of that nature. Um, and you also create one of these for between you and the, um, the renter that you are submitting through, okay? So I did create this. I'll, I'll leave this up for a while. So if you guys wanna get a copy of that, you can, okay? Screenshot it, whatever you gotta do. If you need to, you can inbox me and I'll send you a copy as well. All right, so here is another significant um, portion of Airbnb that you have to know. Now, I know you're probably looking at STR. What is that? STR market, STR market report. Well, it looks, it looks kind of foreign to you guys, but it, it's pretty much something that I deal with all the time, simply because like I said, I have spent the last 20 years, almost 20 years, 15, 20 years of my life um, in the hospitality industry. So the STAR report is basically what we use to monitor um, the growth of the hotel or the position of the hotel or any hospitality outlet for that nature. Uh, whether it's a hotel, whether it's Airbnb, whether it's whatever kind of rental, whatever kind of rental it is, a condo, apartment, whoever, you can use the STAR report to basically monitor their position and their growth. The STAR report is going to be a collection um, of the comp set a collection of the comp set. It's going to tell you what the people around you are doing when it comes into the proximity of apartments and how much they're making. And it shows you how to scale your business in order to be able to make more money. Um, it tells you where you are strong at and where you're weak at. Um, and it breaks it down per room, okay? So when they're including your comp set, they'll, they'll include certain businesses that are close to what you're doing. So if you have a mansion on the B side of town, then they may, including your comp set, maybe the Radisson, maybe um, Hilton, maybe um, they're, they're gonna most likely include anything that's in your star range. So if you're three star, if you're four star, however you're doing it, that is what they are gonna include, include in your comp set, okay? So let's break down the star report. And so I can tell you guys how to read this. Understanding the STAR report is pretty simple. It breaks down to three layers. If you understand these three layers, you can read a STAR report and you can understand the back office of your business with no problem. The first one being one of the most important ones is gonna be your REVPAR. Your REVPAR is revenue per available room. It is a metric used in the hospitality industry to measure hotel performance. The measurement is calculated by multiplying a hotel's average daily room rate, which is the ADR, we'll go over that a little bit later, by its occupancy rate. REVPAR is also calculated by dividing a hotel's total room revenue by the total number of available rooms in the period being measured. Um, so your REVPAR per day is going to be significant because it's basically gonna be telling you what you are making each day per room. So if you have an Airbnb, it's going to tell you exactly what you are making per day per property, okay? Now, the rare part is mix of both of these um, two contents that you see on the um, screen. The occupancy and ADR is what basically the rev part is built of, built of. It is built of the occupancy and it is built of the ADR. I like to think of um, the occupancy and the ADR as the two levers, okay? You have two levers. Only way that rev part is going to pump the way it needs to pump is if these two levers are pulling the way that they need to pull. If only one of these levers is working, it's going to leave a lot over here on the table that is not being pulled into the rev part the way that it needs to be pulled, okay? So when we're talking about occupancy, we're talking about the rate. Occupancy rate is the ratio of the rented or used space to the total amount of available space. Analysts use occupancy rates when discussing senior housing, hospitals, bed and breakfast, hotels, and rental units, among other categories. 
So when you're talking about the occupancy, you're talking about actually how many people are you bringing in house? How many people are actually staying in house? So when you're looking at an Airbnb compared to a hotel, so a hotel you have several different levels of rooms to measure. But when you're looking at an Airbnb, your occupancy will be based on the amount of days that you are pursuing um, revenue throughout the month. So you want to make sure that that Airbnb is occupied every single night. You want to make sure that there are people in that room every single night. There are certain ways to do that. You can do a minimum, um, a minimum stay amount. Like if you go on Airbnb, some of these places have minimum of two nights, minimum of seven nights. Um, when you're starting to deal with some of the bigger mansions, you're, you're dealing with minimum of anywhere between three and 14 nights. I've even seen some that require you to stay at least 30 days. Now you can offset that with, you know, specific and special prices, okay? Um, so that's when we get into the ADR. The average daily rate is a metric widely used in the hosp hospitality industry to indicate an average revenue earned for an occupied room on any given day, all right? So your ADR is going to be basically how much money you are charging these people for this room. Now, let's talk about this. Let's talk about how this compares and how this applies to Airbnb. If I have somebody that is saying, let's just say I invest $6,000 and we'll go over this a little bit more at the end as well. Let's just say I invest $6,000. I know it's going to take me 500 a month for the next 12 months in order to be able to break even. But I'm letting somebody stay in my Airbnb for $15 a night. Okay, so 15 times 30. Y'all, I think that's for 50. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that. But I believe it's for 50. <laughs> Listen, now, yeah, I'm in school, but you know, or whatever. Um, so you're not going to meet your monthly goal. You're not going to meet your monthly goal. And when you're not meeting your monthly goal, your monthly goal, although your occupancy rate was awesome. It was great, although you had people in there every night, you wasn't charging them enough in order to meet your goal. So that's why you have the star report in order to keep you up on all of that good stuff, okay? All right, so you have to, or you have to understand the star, star market report in order to be able to pursue Airbnb. It is what you use to basically measure how good you are doing and making sure that you're able to um, meet your quota for the year or for the month, okay? All right, let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. All right, the next thing, liability, 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 honey. Okay, liability is going to be, <sighs> liability is the thing that we are trying to avoid. We don't want to be liable for anything. Now, even it, whether something get broke or whatever the case may be, we don't want to be liable for nothing that is going on in that property. And let me explain to you why. Before we go into liability, let's go a little bit in depth on how you are even going to obtain the property. This is how you obtain an Airbnb. The way you obtain the Airbnb is the same way. Listen to me now. Listen to me now. This is going to be good. The way you obtain an Airbnb is the same way you will obtain a rental property for yourself. Okay, let me say it again. The way you obtain an Airbnb will be the same way that you pursue or that you obtain a rental property for yourself. You would go apply to a property to get a rental. You go look at the rental. You go look at the apartment. You go look at the house, whatever it is that you're looking for. And you are going to be able to obtain that apartment the same way that you would do any other time. You apply, you pay your application fee and all of those things. The only other step that you have to include is you have to make an agreement with the landlord to allow you to sublet the apartment, okay? So in order to be able to tap into the Airbnb business, you're going to have to, the property owner is going to have to allow you to sublet the apartment, okay? All right? So let's continue forward. Give me one second. Let me make sure I share. 
with this information to my page. All right. So I'm going to say that again, y'all. The way that you are going to be able to tap into an Airbnb is the same way that you would be able to obtain an apartment for yourself. Okay. Same way. Same way. You will go to the apartment office. You would speak to the landlord or you will find the house. You will speak to the property owner um, and you are going to rent that property for yourself. But in that rental agreement, it must you must be able to sublet that apartment to someone else or other tenants, okay? Now, anytime you are going to take on the hat of being the rental agent or the property or doing the work of the property owner while making money, you're gonna have to make sure that you are covered um, in all of these situations, okay? Now, that is where the rental arbitrage comes in. It basically blocks you or it basically um, prevents you from being um, liable for anything that is going on in the apartment or if any damages or whatever the case may be. So let's read what a rental arbitrage is. Rental arbitrage gives you a way to make money with Airbnb without owning any property. The, rent, the rental arbitrage is when you sign a long-term lease with a landlord, then sublet the property as a short-term rental. There we go, that short-term rental again. That's why you gotta understand what that is. It's also commonly called the Airbnb arbitrage. Now that Airbnb is really popular um, and that you know people are really tapping into um, that outlet of wealth, um, now we have some, some, some good verbiage that goes along with what you're trying to explain. Before, it was a little bit difficult to explain certain things to um, certain um, landlords and property owners and things like that. They didn't understand what was going on. Like, some that has been around for a while. But when you start talking about, yeah, every day somebody going to be in here new, your old traditional sublets were basically, hey, you found somewhere else or you're going to move out of town and you want your bestie or your family member to take over your lease or however you want someone to main, maintain the lease while you are away. Um, that is like your traditional sublet. Um, but um, now that we have gotten into um, the passive income, residual income and things of that nature, um, now we have where we can actually use the sublet um, resource to turn over a dollar. Hence why the subtitle for this um, webinar was listed as new money, old resources, okay? So continue on. The goal is to make a profit on the difference between the monthly rent you pay to the landlord and the income you bring in from using it as a Airbnb sublease or other short-term rental, okay? All right, so not only you have to include several things in your payout, you're gonna have to include the ability to pay the landlord. You're gonna have to include the ability to make the money that you're looking to make. And then you're also gonna have to include um, the money that you need to make back. Um, so you have to have your pro profit margin, which is what you make over what you spent. You're going to have to get your return back and you're going to have to pay the rent. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're including that and in what you are charging your guests. Okay. And I kind of added that up for you here, um, within the next couple pages, but let's go back. Sorry, y'all getting ahead of myself there. All right, so looking at your initial investment, I know you guys are probably thinking to yourself, okay, hmm, what is gonna be the initial investment? What am I looking like? What, what, is I, what am I looking like? What will I have to invest to be able to do this? And I know it sounds like a lot of money, but it is not, it really is not. Your initial investment will sometimes be in between $6,000 and $10,000 just depending on who 
you know what you know and how many outlets outlets and resources that you have if you have an old family home old property or whatever that you have hidden in your pocket somewhere or whatever then yes you do have the possibility of not making any big investments um but where there is a will there is a way so although you may not have somebody just sitting around waiting to give you a property to send off the airbnb you can still do this without touching any of your money okay so here's a quick way to flip one of those 25k cars that you got just got approved for here is a quick way to um, invest your 401k here is a quick way to really turn debt into wealth okay if you have a 25k um if you have a 25k credit card 30 33,000 25k whatever if you have a $10,000 credit card whichever you can possibly turn those that initial investment into um ongoing passive income um ongoing residuals ongoing money that you will constantly have coming into your household and you can make a killing with Airbnb properties, okay? So looking at the possibilities, and this is just an example, y'all. This is just an example. I didn't spend too much time on really pouring into the, to the numbers because they can vary. But I wanted to give you an idea of what you'll have, um, what you'll have to give out in order to be able to obtain, okay? So let's just say first month rent's 1800, okay? Let's just say first month rent is um, anywhere between 1800 and 2000, okay? Then additional, you're gonna need a deposit. Most landlords now, um, they are requiring first and last, but I base this on the first month deposit, on the, on the first, um, on the deposit plus the first month, okay? Um, which is normal for Florida, okay? All right, then you're looking at utilities. You got to get the lights on. You got to get the water on. You got to get the cable on, okay? Now, if you, this is where you can run into fees and snacks. That's what you, that's why you have, that's why I say in between 6,000 and 10,000 because I want to leave room for problems that may occur, okay? So if someone, if there was a tenant that lived there before that had lights on at that place and they didn't pay the bill and it cost this much, cost that much, it is easy to rack up fees during this time by initiating the utilities, okay? So anybody that has had a rental property, they know how that works, okay? Now, also, you have to have your LLC. You have to have either your LLC, your incorporation, specifically your LLC, because it does, um, it does minimize your liability when it comes to any type of business that you're doing, any type of endeavor that you're taking on. If you have studied LLCs, if you have been in any of my previous classes, business lunch, whatever, all of this is actually already included in Wealth Builders University if you don't know. Um, but in this, this also, this video will be included in Wealth Builders University. So you'll be able to go back and you'll be able to get this information from Wealth Builders University, okay? So any, if you know anything about LLC, you know that it does minimize your liability. And that's what we want. We want to minimize the liability. All right. Now, also, you'll have city permits. There are permits that come along um, with renting property, okay? It could be um, a little bit of everything. When, when you're talking about renting properties out, you are talking about um, a brick and mortar. So that's first and foremost, you have to at least register with your city. Now, when you do a normal LLC, you usually only need like your sales tax, your EIN, and your um, and the actual um, articles of incorporation. Um, but when you're dealing with brick and mortar, which is the actual physical building, then you also need to register with your, sta with your, your state. And you could do that through your city, okay? So that permit, I believe, last time I checked, it was around like 130. Um, Sometimes um, some people they do like to register with um, the um, they do like to register with um, uh, 
the American Lodging Association. Oh my gosh, I couldn't get that off. Sorry, y'all. The American Lodging Co Association, it is um, specifically for hotel hospitality. Um, they're actually about to have this huge event. As a matter of fact, I think it's like tomorrow. Maybe it's tomorrow. It starts tomorrow. Um, they're going to be having a huge event at the Hard Rock, um, the American Lodge Association. Um, they bring in amazing speakers, um, a little bit of everything. You'll learn a little bit of everything about the hospitality industry. So if you are interested, I can see you the information for that. Um, and I would suggest that you tap into that as well. All right. Now, here's the fun part. But anybody that has rent it anywhere or you know anybody that has their own place although this is the fun part it can be the most expensive part so now we're talking about furniture you have to furnish the place um this is what's going to set you apart remember at the beginning when we talked about taking those pictures that look cute or whatever and then when the people get to the place and the thing don't look right and no we ain't doing that that's that's what we're not going to do so I'm going to need y'all, if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to, you know, listen, let me tell y'all something. I got a cousin and you guys can go follow her on Facebook. My cousin, Rashawn Devore, she is an interior designer. If you do not know how to decorate, go find her. Go find her. I was actually just with my bestie last night. She was over here helping me. Um, <laughs> I can decorate a little tea, a little piece of something, y'all. But um, if you are not good with this part, although it's fun spending a couple of dollars, make sure you get somebody to help you with the color coordination. And baby, we don't want to go in there and have um, like you at the um, the old time pottery. Um, 1954 edition, you know what I'm saying? So I want to make sure that these places look good, that y'all stuff look good, and that will make you, that can help you become a super host on Airbnb, okay? Okay. All right, so your initial investment, like I said, is going to be in between 6000 and 10000 It may range, it may vary, and it's all up to you. It's all about what you're willing to put in, what you're looking to get. Um, now, if you're looking to get low-key, um, one of them big boys, big mansion style, whatever, okay, unless your daddy named Trump, I don't know nothing about that, okay? So you might be looking to pay $3,000, $4,000 um, for the initial rent and all that. We ain't doing that over here, but it is, it is available for you to do. Um, and so you have to think wherever your um, square footage for your place Whatever the square footage for the property goes up, um, then also the uh, requirement for the furnish furnishing and all of those things will go up as well, okay? Utilities and all of that, okay? Um, so you just wanna make sure that you take that into consideration. Um, this, I kind of based on like a one bedroom, uh, one bedroom, maybe small two bedroom, um, condo, apartment, B-side, whatever, um, to start you off, something nice, something nice and something that you can really maintain. Um, so that's basically where I'm at with that, okay? All right, so it's just an just example, okay? So let's continue on. Let's talk about how to actually formulate your returns. Now I'm at home, y'all, so I'm kicking my feet up. Don't, it's, don't worry about me. Don't, don't worry about me, sweetheart, period. That's that split. <laughs> y'all know I'm crazy. Anyway, so let's talk about, let's talk about where the money really comes in at period let's talk about getting your returns back okay so anytime i have any in any of my businesses anything that i have pursued anything that i have endeavored in 2.5 is my go-to baby 2.5 is my go-to and i know a lot of you may not understand um what par levels mean and things of that nature but i always base um sorry y'all i was not tapped in um let me get the questions absolutely absolutely pauline yes you can do that and that is that is a huge um that is a huge um um uh, objective or a huge incentive um, to buying, selling, renovating homes. That is something, a feature that has been added. And so if you talk to most real estate, um, real estate investors right now, that is a huge feature that has been added on. Matter of fact, many of the real estate agents are taking advantage of this. Um, 
you can purchase a property and fix it up. You don't have to sell it. It's kind of like, let me break this down for you. It's kind of like when you when when you when when the drug dealers be out there selling the dope, and you get the key. Do you break it down or you sell the whole thing? It's all up to you. If you want to sell the whole thing, yeah, you can sell the whole thing. And that would be like selling your house, selling your house, getting your profit. But breaking it down is more or less selling it per night, which when you're talking about um, not, not y'all don't be in my business. Nah. Don't be in my business. Yes, that is the example I use. And it is what it is. If you know, you know. OK, anyway, moving forward. Uh, yes, Pauline, that is something that you can do. You can buy um, torn down house, foreclosed house, whatever, fix it up and sell it on Airbnb. Okay. All right. So let's continue on. So again, my formula is always 2.5%, baby, 2.5%. And I always times my formula um, based on what I know about par levels. Okay. So when you're talking about par levels, like just, let's just say, for instance, we're talking about a hotel. All right. So if we're talking about a hotel and we want to know how many towels we need to purchase for this hotel, then most of the time we base that on a part level. Now, the hotel should always have anywhere between two and three parts of what they have. One part equals enough to furnish the entire hotel. Two parts equals enough to furnish the entire hotel and then also have, have enough to um, refurnish the entire hotel in storage and then the half where i use is that you always want to have um a half or a five percent or a, a half percent or five percent um i'm sorry a half or 0.5 percent um tied up or wrapped up into um your daily rotation so when it comes to funds you always want to have that 0.5 percent rolling in your daily rotation that is for things you may need to fix that is for things that you may need to purchase for the company or whatever the case may be then you want to have that set amount that you need to make back that set amount is usually your investment then you want to have one time your investment you want to make sure that you are able to double your money okay so that one and a half percent is going to be usually your profit margin but it delegates those two, um, it coordinates those two um, percentages of your profit so they are going into the right place, okay? So 2.5% is my go-to. All right, so your return formula is based on the total divided by the number of months it takes to break even times the total by 2.5% and add that percent to the total monthly charge and then on top of that, you also want to make sure that you are including what you can in rent, all right? So this, what I have here is based on your profit. In order to make a profit, you are going to have to at least sell your room for $58 a day. Now that is not including the amount that you need to add on to that profit in order to, I'm, I'm sorry, add on to that amount in order to be able to pay the landlord, okay? That will be, that may vary because it all depends on how much rent you owe, okay? Which is why I did not include it into the formula, but it is something that you will need to know in order to be able to understand how much you need to be charging every month, okay? Or every day, by day, okay? Now, when we're looking at, let's just say again, we said on the last screen that we invested about $6,000. $6,000 was our bottom price, okay? $6,000. And we divide that by 12 months. We need to at least make $500 a month in order to be able to get our money back at the end of that lease, saying, uh, assuming that that lease is 12 months, okay? Now, 2.5%, which will be your investment is 1%. Also, your investment double is 1%. And then the half a percent that you need to be in your daily rotation in order to be able to have money that is flowing through your company. Okay? All right? So that is going to be, you need to tap into 15000 a year in order to see a profit. 
in order to see money come back into your pocket, okay? Now, when you look at both of those together, you're looking at about 20,000 through the whole year to basically take up care of you. This is focused on taking care of you, all right? That would be about 1667 per month, dividing all of that um, by breaking that down into 12 months. And then if you do the daily average, you're gonna be looking at $58, okay? $58, okay? Now, let's just say the rent is $1,800, okay? Let me add it up for y'all. Let's just say the rent is $1,800. All right, we we're gonna divide that. Um, I'm sorry, 1800. So let's divide that by 30. You're looking at 60, about 60 a day. Okay. So when you're looking at about 60 a day, um, let's see here. Sorry, y'all. When you're looking at about 60 a day, now add that on to what you need to make. You're looking at about 110 a night. 110 a night will get you your profit, your investment. And also it will um, help you obtain the money to pay the rent on the property, okay? Sorry, y'all, I keep looking this way. I'm on two screens tonight, excuse me. Sorry, y'all, I love you, Facebook. This this where, is this where everything at, right here. But I'm actually making sure I film this, making sure that all of this can go on Wealth Builders University. I wanna make sure that I'm including all of this in there because listen, not only are, am I gonna teach you guys how to create your, create, uh, debt wealth, um, get your, listen, wealth builders community is not based on those that are rich because I'm not rich by far. It is not based on those that are, um, have mastered their finances. It is based on those who want to get there. Those who are in transition. Let me tell you something. I spent a lot of time in transition. I spent nine years transitioning from the street life to um, corporate America, to the pews and all of those things. And a lot of things I did not know, I did not understand. And if I would have understood these things, understood these things long time ago, it would have cut out many of the sleepless nights, the tears and all of the things that make life hard, okay? So that's why I wanna give those things to you guys, all right? So again, this is the information that you need in order to obtain your return, all right? Let's get into the final moments. So here is a layout of where I, um, what I expect and the milestones that I expect to be able to, grab my drink, huh? grab my drink, please. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about it in a second. Sorry, y'all. Like I said, I'm at home tonight. So here are here is the information um, that will help you be able to track your milestones and track where you need to go. Give me one second, y'all. I got the car now. Okay, that to everything. Now, here is a little tra tracking goals that help you understand your milestones, all right? I want you to understand this before you even endeavor in this Airbnb business. And before you even endeavor in anything, understand the capacity and the value of automating your business. Automate your business. Automating your business is going to take planning. You do not want to, let me tell you something. That was my problem when I started out. I still struggle with that now. I don't know how to delegate. Don't know how to make sure that I am contributing the just around amount, just the right amount without having to pull my hair out and stress myself, overwork myself in order to reach my goals. The idea is to work smarter, not harder. It is, and let me tell you something, it is every business owner responsibility to automate their business. And what do I mean by automate? That means you should be able to attain clients, attain leads, attain reservations, whatever you are doing, the business should be able to be ran without you. 
This is where business owners really mess up at. Let me tell you how they messed up. If you got sick, if you fell sick right now and you went into the hospital and the maybe, I don't know if the doctor's expecting you to live, whatever. If you were debilitated, if you were handicapped, if you were completely and totally disabled, can your business still run itself? And this is the difference between an employee and a CEO. Do you have SOPs, standard operating procedures? Do you have systems in place? Do you have things that are in place already that are going to help you make sure that your business is flowing with or without you? That is what it's going to take in order to be able to tap in to this next level. Hear me now, all right? So how to automate your Airbnb business. So let's do trial and error. Let's do plug and play. Now we know that if we have, let's start off with the simple stuff. We have somebody that stays at the Airbnb. Is somebody gonna stay at Airbnb? When they leave, somebody gotta clean it. So let's just say that you're doing this on the side. You got another job or whatever the case may be. Are you going to be able to go there and clean it every time, every day? No. Okay. So you want to make sure that you have somebody that is going to be doing the cleaning. Are you going to be able to balance the trials of running the back office of this Airbnb every day? making sure that your property is listed on the right third-party apps, making sure that the um, guests are receiving the correspondence that they need, making sure that somebody is able to answer the phone and ask the host questions or answer emails. Airbnb is a lot based, um, based on, they make it so simple for you because they create a through app communication. So if who's going to be there running that through app uh, communication? Who's going to be there answering those emails, answering the questions? answering questions about your business. One thing about Airbnb, them guests going to contact the host and that's on period. They're going to contact the host. They want to know, is, they ask, sometimes they ask simple, stupid questions like, is this, does this really look like it, like the picture? You know, whatever it is, your property is rated on the way you respond. Um, this is the, these are the things that set you apart and help you become a super host. Your property is rated on the way you respond. Your property is rated on um, how, you know, how the guests review you. There's, and it's also rated on how you respond to the reviews, okay? So make sure that you plan out your business, that you automate your, your business, okay? Make sure that you keep your initial investment seamless. Be your own bank. And what I mean by that is take one of them credit cards you just got. Take one of those credit cards you've been holding on to and use that to invest. Don't go borrow money because if it all crashes and all falls down, I don't want to owe nobody but myself. And that's it, all right? Make sure that you have your communication and customer service level down pat. I told y'all, if you don't know how to do no hospitality, you don't need to be in no Airbnb business. I don't care how much money. If your attitude ain't right, don't. Start bothering with these people because some of y'all attitudes on this app is out of control. The level of pride, and you call yourself women and men of God, my God. Okay, but anyway, continuing forward. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, I had to throw that out there. Um, continuing forward again, like I said, if you don't have customer service, don't bother these people, okay. Also, the second investment. The second investment I consider is as the upkeep. You are going to have to make sure that things stay up in this house. Like, let's just say you're going to re renew your lease. Okay, you're going to renew your lease. You're going to continue on with Airbnb. You have to make sure that you're not blowing through your profit. You have to make sure that you are planning for your future. Make sure you have your second investment, okay? When you're talking about returns, your returns, that is important. 
Who is who doing this for free? Nobody. This is what it's all about. It's all about to make money. So make sure that you have your returns scheduled out correctly. Make sure that you have your returns um, added correctly. Make sure that you have your returns um, summed up correctly. So that way that you are able to receive a profit from your Airbnb business. You're able to make money through your Airbnb business. Okay. Awesome. So again, like I said, this information will be included in Wealth Builders University. You will be able to access this in your success library. Um, this video will be uploaded tonight. Um, our launch date is going to be September 1st, 2021. I am so excited, you guys. When I tell you there is so a plethora of information wrapped up in uni Wealth, Wealth Builders University, um, I have so many clients that I have, I have helped. Um, I have spent over the last year helping clients um, with their credit and their finances and um, building um, their financial portfolios and things of that nature. But I feel like I left something on the table. And the reason why I feel like I left something on, I left information on the table is because I did not give you everything that you needed in order to maintain your position. And that is the main reason why I created Wealth Builders University. Also, there is a lack of financial literacy in many of our inner cities. I wanna make sure that the people know, I wanna make sure that you understand your resources and I wanna make sure that you are two steps ahead. No more saying that we are 400 years behind. I wanna make sure that each and every one of our black, brown, um, girls and boys have the information that they need in order to continue to move forward. I want to make sure that those that are connected to the body of Christ are able to advance in the kingdom. I want to make sure that every person that is going through a transition, whether it's a divorce, whether it's coming off of addiction, whatever it is, whatever you are in your life, whether it's you just got out of jail, I don't care what it is. If you are making a transition in your life, I want to make sure that you have all the materials, all the objectives, all the, all the resources um, in order to be able to move forward. And that is what Wealth Builders University is about. It is about getting the knowledge to the people. We are breaking generational curses, one financial mindset at a time. Um, and it is, it is imperative to make sure um, that we have the right information. The word of God says that my people fail for the lack of knowledge. So I want to make sure that you guys have the information that you need. Okay. Listen, I love each and every one of you. I am so glad for those who attended tonight. Um, I'm going to leave this up for just a few moments for um, some of you to catch this on the replay. Um, but um, you will be able to then, um, I will be deleting this video and it will be going directly into um, Wealth Builders um, University. So you'll be able to access this information directly from there and take all of these foundation, I'm sorry, take all of this foundational information and create money in your sleep. Listen, that's how the rich folks live in now. That's how they living. And I think that all of us deserve a chance at the American dream. So if you are looking for another stream of income, if you are looking to enhance your financial investment portfolio, here is some more information to add to your arsenal. If you need me, you guys know how to reach me. My information is always listed on my page, as well as uh, you can contact me through the informed consultant. You can inbox me, you can call me, you can text me, however you need to reach me. Um, feel free to reach out to me at your earliest convenience. I'm always available, okay? If I don't answer you right away, trust me, I'll make sure I get back to you, all right? So I love you all with the love of Christ. Deuces.